Next, let's look at physical development. The body and the mind work together and depend on each other. So they both need attention. There's a Bible phrase that says, treat your body like a temple. So just put it in your notes, body like temple. Not a bad suggestion. Treat your body like a temple, not a woodshed. Now, in taking care of the physical, we must learn to be conscious of ourselves, but not self-conscious. We need to be aware of our physical appearance, our physical well-being, but not to the point of being self-conscious. We need to be aware, we need to take care. Now, physical development also includes your good health and your well-being. You've got to spend some time on that so that you feel good in the marketplace. Get involved in some form of disciplined exercise. Keeping fit and feeling good has a positive effect on your attitude, not just your appearance. Even if you're not into sports, there are some cassette programs and books on how to stay in excellent shape in only 20 to 30 minutes a day. Get the tapes and find your best way to stay physically fit. Just develop a bit of consciousness about taking care of yourself physically. Physical fitness pays great dividends in terms of your energy level, your ability to live a long, healthy life, and your general sense of well-being. A friend of mine said, a standard education will get you standard results. You want a lot more than standard results? You need to become a lot more than a standard person. And now I've got some more good news for you. Never before in the history of the world has it been easier for someone like you or me to become educated, skilled, highly creative, innovative, and spilling over with profitable ways of thinking. Discipline starts with the little ones and works up to the big ones. Start with all the things you can do to make your life better and make you feel better about yourself. Make a list. Life will give you some pretty big challenges if you can handle the small ones. But unless you practice on the small ones and master those, you don't have a chance for the major ones. A man strides out of his house to go straighten out the corporation and he has not yet straightened out his garage. Who's kidding who? So work on all the disciplines that will improve the quality of your life. And here's an important thought. Everything affects everything else. Every lack of discipline affects every other discipline. Mistakenly, the man says, this is the only place I let down. See, that's not true. Every letdown affects the rest of your performance. You have got to change the way you think. It is the whole determining factor of where you go in life. We are all where we are today because we thought ourselves to this position. If you don't like the position, think yourself out of it. See, effort is what separates the boys from the men. What you do every day will dictate your future. You have to go into those dark chambers that we often shut off, and you got to open them up. Fail, and you're going to be in your head. You're going to be saying, I'm not good enough. And it's how you get through that. It's how you get through that on a daily basis when that thing is saying, man, I'm 43. I've done so much. You start to become civilized. The refrigerator gets full. You start get, making money, and you start, I'm not getting cold anymore. I'm retired. At 40, people shouldn't be playing basketball or football or at 43 I'm still putting 100 mile weeks still doing thousands of pull-ups do thousands of push-ups because I'm not allowing myself to become civilized the worst thing that can happen to a man is become civilized you want to be uncommon amongst uncommon people period what are you doing to develop yourself and if you'd say, my gosh, John, I'll tell you right now, I'm doing a lot to develop myself. I, I mean, I, I've got a personal growth plan, and, and I'm intentional in this, and I'm, I'm doing this on a daily deal. If you could say that to me, then I'd say, hey, we're, we're in good shape here. We're, we're in good shape, because that's the key. The reason you start with yourself is because you cannot give what you do not have. So you better start with yourself. Because if you're leading others and have nothing to give them, nothing to share with them, nothing to teach them, then I can promise you, You'll never be what you want to be as a leader. Why is LeBron James who he is? It's not because he's lucky. You know, I would say, you know, he's lucky. Shit, he may have certain physical factors. Or Michael Jordan, I remember I interviewed him years ago. And I said, what makes you the best in the world? Is it skill? Is it talent? Is it ability? Is it background? Is it training? 
And he was so awesome. He said, Tony, I can tell you the truth that it won't sound like hyperbole or false modesty. He said, I didn't even make the high school basketball team my sophomore year. I was cut. He said, what it is, is every day I demand more from myself than anybody else could possibly expect. I don't compete with other people. I compete with what I'm capable of. And it's just like that kind of standard is inspiring. Why don't you stop beating yourself up because you don't perform perfectly all the time and start accepting yourself because your heart is right? How much do you love yourself? Because if you understand the value of self-love, you'll never be friends with those type of people. Most of the people out here are running around empty. They have no sense of self, no sense of self-love. When I say self-love, it has nothing to do with celebrity, money, materialistic things, and all of the things that your negative mind could probably go to. Those crappy times, those times when you're depressed, those times when you gave up on yourself, those times when someone else gave up on you, those times that you gave up on others, the times that you quit, the times that you failed, the times that you felt so small, you were embarrassed. Those times don't live in this moment. And the more of those times that you cultivate in your mind and you ruminate on and you think and you self-talk on and you revisit in your mind, the more disempowering times from the past, hurtful times from the past, failures from the past that you keep running in your head, what that is doing is that is taking up the very free space necessary for the bold ideas to come in. It's taking up the space for the very needed white space for creativity to come in, for the dreams to come in, for the best you to speak through from. Like, it's hard for you to live an authentic and true and vulnerable and real life if you're always speaking through your baggage, if you're always thinking through your bag. That whole concept, like when people really ask how I've been able to be successful, it's that. It's, I'm stoked on who I am today, 100%. Yes. Like, I'll give myself the pat on the back before anybody else. But I'm so desperate to get better. Yeah. Like, I'm so hungry to know why I'm inadequate right now for what I want, right? Correct. So the way that I sum it up is your past can never be bigger than your future. So it's like, once you've done some, right? I built a billion dollar business, but like for me, I'm not looking at that. I want to know wh what do I need to do and become in order to hit that next thing? Okay. That not only are all achievers doing that, but all happy people do that. In other words, here's how we know you're perfect now. You've produced the external life you have. So you are perfect for that life right now. You are all you need to be right now. But if you want a different life, an improved life, a growing life, right? An increased life, this version of you is inferior to get to that place. And so the reason we have rapport, the reason we like each other is like, I also want to be surrounded by people who are not messaging me. Is enough enough? Everything's good, man. Take a break. And I may not want more money. You and I both have a lot of money, right? We probably like more. That's not my driver. I want more peace, more gratitude, more abundance, more contribution, more memories, more experiences, more joy, more love. That will never be enough for me. Put me in the ground if I don't get any more of that stuff, right? I want to grow. I want to see the next place. And so that's the journey. Those of you that have faith, if you believe there's this place you're going to someday, that's because you're always going someplace. So you might as well want to get the information and the equipment to get there. And that's, that's where I want to go. Your body is your unconscious mind. In a sense, if you're sitting down and you start thinking about uh, some future worst case scenario that you're conjuring up in your mind and you begin to feel the emotion of that event, your body doesn't know the difference between the event that's taking place in your world, outer world, and what you're creating by emotion or thought alone. So most people then, they're, they're constantly reaffirming their emotional states. So when it comes time to give up that emotion, they can say, I really want to do it. But really, the body is stronger than the mind because it's been conditioned that way. So the servant now has become the master. And the person, all of a sudden, once they step into that unknown, they'd rather feel guilt and suffering because at least they can predict it. Being the unknown is a scary place for most people because the unknown is uncertain. People say to me, well, I can't predict my future. I'm in the unknown. And I always say the best way to predict your future is to create it. Not from the known, but from the unknown.